Hey, what's going on ladies and gentlemen? Hopefully you're having a great day. In today's episode of creating a Roblox simulator, we're going to be creating the rank system, which is also commonly known as the rebirth system. As always, if this video does help you guys out or you do enjoy it, make sure you smash the like button, also hit the subscribe button, and turn those post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. I also have a Patreon if you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I make during this episode. There's a link down below in the description, and you guys go check that out as well. With that being said, let's get into it. So, to showcase what the actual rank system is and how it works we're going to go into eating simulator which is the simulator that we're recreating throughout this series and we're going to look at their rank system directly so looking at the rank system directly this is the first rank that you get for completely free and we can see right here these are the stats that it offers so the damage the hp the gain which refers to the food gain and the speed multiplier are all multiplied by one then if we click on the second rank we can see this multiplier changes to two on the third rank this changes to five and for each rank the number keeps increasing another important part is that when you purchase a new rank all of your coins food and items are reset so we want to also make sure to include that in our system as well so to start adding this system to our game what we want to do is we want to go inside of the server script surface and go to our shop server script now inside of the script is how we handle all of the purchases that the player can make from our in-game shop and we can see the purchase function right here this is called if the player does not own the item and they can afford to purchase it so once we check if they're actually able to purchase it we call this purchase function right here inside of this function we take away the price of the item from the player's coin balance and then we also modify the player's data by going into their inventory and then into the specific directory and then into the specific tool and we change that value to true because they now own it now what we want to do is inside of the purchase function we want to actually check if the shop is equals ranks because then we'll know if the player is purchasing a brand new rank now above this purchase function we want to create a new function which can be called something like reset or rank purchase or rank reset or even rebirth whatever stands out to you the most and makes it easier to understand i'm going to go with rank reset because when i see rank reset i see this has something to do with rank and it also has something to do with reset so if in the future i'm ever trying to debug code or wondering why the player stats are being reset then i can look for reset or if i'm trying to figure out something to do with ranks then i can obviously look for the rank keyword and find that exactly here now this function is going to take the player as an argument the first thing that we want to do is we want to do the actual reset part so what we want to do is we want to modify the player's current coin and food balance to zero the way that we do that is that we access their food and coin stat and we can see right here that we're actually already accessing their coin stat so we can simply just copy this paste that there and we're going to set the value to zero because we're resetting the amount of coins that they have and then we're also going to do this with food as well so we're just going to change coins to food and there we go and now we reset both the players currencies now on top of this we also want to loop through all of the players owned tools or own food and also their own dna as well and we also want to reset those and if you're confused by that at all what i mean is that when a player purchases a brand new rank their food item will be set back to the first one or the default one and they'll no longer own french fry 2 french fry 3 4 5 and all the way up to whatever they purchased the same goes for dna as well so if they own up to the third dna they'll be reset back to one and they will won't own any of these other ones now we'll first start with the own tools and the way that we're going to do this is by using a for loop so we're going to say for underscore because we're not using the index here and we're just going to say child and this is going to be a bool value and you'll see why in a sec in i pairs and now we're going to loop through the player dot inventory dot owned tools and now we're going to get children and then that creates the for loop right there and if you're confused by this at all it's because of how we have our data system set up so if we go inside of players we go inside of my player we're going into the inventory then we're going into the own tools folder and when we go into the own tools folder we call get children which gets all of these children right here and now what we want to do is we want to say if child dot name does not equal our default tool which we can see this right here as long as it does not equal that then we want to set the value of the bool value to false so we want the player to not own that anymore and then we want to copy and paste this and we want to do the exact same thing for own dna's and then of course we're going to change the default right here which is french fry to the default dna which is retro regular so there we go now this will reset all of the players own dna's and food also known as tools now another thing that we need to make sure of though is that the player actually equips the correct tool because what we're doing right now is just setting the values all to false as well as changing the ones that the player has equipped and we actually 
actually have a really easy and simple to use function up here, which is called unequip. And we need to just pass through the player and the shop. And what this will do is it'll check if the shop is food, then it's going to set it to the default food right here. And it'll also give the player the food as well. And we can use the exact same function for the DNA as well. It's not going to give the player the DNA, but we don't need to give the player the DNA. So that doesn't matter. So we're going to call this unequip function down here. We're going to say unequip, we'll pass through the player and we'll pass through food. That'll give the player the specific food item. And then we'll do the exact same thing for DNA as well. So now that we pretty much have this function done, what we want to do is we want to actually call this function inside of the if statement we created originally. So we're going to say rank reset and then just pass through the player. So let's go into our player data script right here and change the data store service to just something random so that we reset our data. We'll start our game and we'll test this out to see if we're making good progress so far. So to test this out, let's go ahead and buy French fry too. Let's buy the second DNA as well. So now we own something other than the default food and DNA. And then the rank, let's go ahead and purchase the rank. We have currently 480 coins and let's get ourselves some food as well. So there we go. Now let's go ahead and purchase the second rank. We can see our coins and our food have been reset to zero and the food and DNA items have both been reset to the default ones as well. We also just spotted a little bug as well. We can see that when I equipped the new food item, we actually forgot to remove the previous food item as well. So we're still left with French fry two and French fry one. Luckily, because of the way that our system actually works, their food isn't increased by using the French fry two item. We're getting two food no matter what food item we actually use. So at least it's not easily exploitable. We're based on the tool that the player has equipped. They could get a lot more money, for instance. Now, the area that we're going to apply this fix to is actually the give tool function right here. Inside of this function, we see that we actually already are trying to handle this specific issue currently. The thing is, though, is that the player's tool is only in their backpack if the player does not have that tool equipped. So if the player is holding the tool in their hand, the tool will no longer be inside their backpack. It'll actually be inside of their character. We're going to create a new variable inside of here called equipped tool. And we're going to set that to player dot character find first child, which is up. And what we can provide into this function is the specific class that we're looking for. And since we're looking for the player's tool, we are going to say tool. If you're confused at all by the class name, you can also think of class name as sort of what type an object actually is. Inside of our workspace, we can see that I have a model right here, which is named monster. And the class name for this would be model. And then if we look inside of monster, we can see that there are parts inside of here. So if we want to select one of these, we would say part as that's what these specific objects are. Or we could say accessory or humanoid or pants, shirt, and things like that. Anyways, we're going to look for the tool because the player should only ever have one tool inside of their character at a time anyway. And then if we find the tool, we're then going to destroy it. We can go ahead, walk over this plate again. We can purchase the second fry. We can buy a new rank and we can see that our first tool was deleted and we've been given the new tool as well. Now we should test this twice because remember, originally, as long as the player wasn't holding the tool, we should not experience the original issue that we were fixing because we would already delete the tool from the backpack. But for the tool to not be in the backpack, the player has to hold the tool. So now as long as we're holding the tool, we can see once again that it works perfectly and that's awesome. So earlier we created the rank reset function Function, which handles resetting all the different players stats when they purchase a new rank. What we haven't done yet is we haven't created a function which handles the modifiers or the actual rewards of using a rank. If we look up at the equip function, we can see that we have an if statement right here. And if the shop is food, then we also do some extra work like giving the player their specific food tool. Inside of here, we're going to create an else if and we're going to check if the shop equals ranks. Now if the shop does equal ranks, then we're going to call a new function, which is going to be equip rank and we're going to accept the player and rank, which is going to be a string. So now we can go back to our else if statement and we can call the equip rank and pass through the player and the tool name, which would be the rank. Now, whenever we equip a new rank, we want to adjust the player's movement speed and their health. The way that we can do this is by modifying the properties on the player's humanoid. So we're going to create a new variable called humanoid and we're going to find that from the player. So player.character find first child humanoid. And if we do find the humanoid, then we want to modify those properties. We're also going to infer that the type of the humanoid variable is going to be a humanoid. So we can easily see all the properties that exist. So we can see that there's a max health property. We can see that there's a health property and there's a walk speed property as well. Now, another thing that we want to do is go inside of the replicate storage and we want to look at the rank config. And what we need to figure out is based on the specific rank that the player equips, we want to get the multiplier so we can modify the player's stats. Luckily,
Unfortunately, we already handle this with the get item function up here, although it does provide us some extra information like the ID, which is something that we're not going to use, but that's okay. We're going to create a new variable inside of our if statement, and that's going to be called the multiplier. And we're going to set that to get item and we'll pass through the rank and ranks as the shop name. Now, unfortunately, because of how we handle this function, we're returning two different things. We're returning the ID and the tool line config. So what we actually need to do is we want to say local underscore comma multiplier. And what we're doing here is we're creating two variables and we're assigning it to what is returned from the get item function. So the first variable, which would be underscore, will be equal to the tool config line dot ID. And the second variable, which is multiplier, will be equal to the tool config line. Now we're using underscore because we don't plan to use the ID. And in Lua, you commonly use underscore when you don't plan to actually use that variable. That's why in for loops, when we don't use the index, we also use an underscore instead of another word there as well. Additionally, rather than calling this multiplier, we could call this config line so that it's more accurate. And then if we want to, we could create another variable called multiplier once again, and we could set that to config line dot stat. So now that we actually have the multiplier, let's go ahead and modify the player stats. We're going to modify the player's max health, and we're going to set that to the multiplier times 100. You should make a constant up here, which is basically a variable which will never change. And we could say local health, all in caps, that's how constants are supposed to work so that you can easily identify constants. And we're going to say 100, or you could even say default health, if that helps you remember what this variable is specifically is. And then we can replace 100 with this variable so that it's easier to understand. And the reason that we're using a constant is so that we can easily distinguish this from our other code. And if we come back to the script in the future, and we can easily identify what variable we need to modify to simply change the health, then we can come right here and we can spot that very quickly. So now that we changed the max health, we also want to change the player's current health as well. And we're just going to set that to the player's max health. So they basically fully regenerate all their health instantly. And then we also want to set the player's walk speed as well. And once again, I'd recommend creating a constant up here too. And we can name that default walk speed or just walk speed, whatever you prefer. And I'm going to set mine to 16 and then we'll say multiplier times default walk speed and that's how we'll modify the player's walk speed so we can now go ahead and test this out by going into our game let's go ahead and purchase a new rank and we can see that we are moving a lot faster now let's go ahead and go back to a lower rank and we can see that a health indicator did pop up for a second and our speed was changed as well so we can equip the highest rank that we have again and we can see that our movement speed increases once again an issue that i just spotted though is that if we unequip a rank it actually doesn't reset the player's current rank so we still have the fast movement speed but it says that we have the default rank equipped. So we need to fix that as well. Before we apply the fix, another thing that I just spotted is our give tool function is pretty much identical to the equip rank, except for the fact that we're passing in two parameters into the equip rank. What we could do is we could keep this as two parameters, although I'd also recommend changing give tool to have two parameters as well. But we could also change the equip rank to work the exact same way that our give tool does. And rather than requiring the specific tool name to be passed through to this function, we actually just get the tool name by looking at this value right here. So I figured I would just do the exact same thing for the equip rank as well. So we're going to say local rank equals, and then we can just copy this right here. And we can say instead of equip tool is going to be equipped rank. And we no longer need to pass through the tool name here because we're already getting it within the function. So to fix the original issue that we were just talking about, all we need to do is we just need to add this function to the unequip function as well. So now the bottom of the equip function looks identical to the bottom of the unequip function. And realistically, we could make the unequip and equip function all into one considering how much exact same code there is. But rather than doing that, I'll just leave it as is. That's just an idea for you guys if you wanted to do that on your own. So now the reason that this will fix our issue is because whenever we call this unequip function, we directly change the rank value right here. And remember the player.inventory.equipRank.value will be the rank that's applied up here. So when we call the equip rank function, this value will be reset to the default value, which is noob before this function's called. So now whenever we unequip this, it'll reset back to the default one. And we can test that by going into our game and unequipping this. And we can see we're very slow if we equip this and then unequip it, we go slow and our health resets as well. So that's perfect. Now you might be wondering, when are we going to implement the system which modifies the amount of food the player gains when clicking based on their current rank? And we actually already did this in the last episode. If we go into the utils folder and we look at the rewards and stats, we can see that the food multipliers actually takes the rank into account already. So this system is already implemented and whenever the player clicks, their food will be multiplied for each specific rank. We do also need to add damage as well, but considering we haven't set up a PVP or damage system at all yet, we'll do that 
that at a later episode. The last thing that we need to do though, we need to actually apply the ranks effects to the player when they first join the game. What we've done so far is we actually only apply these effects when the player equips that specific item from the shop. If we go inside of our player data script, we can see inside of here that we actually have a give tool function. And if we search for where that's used that, that's actually called at the bottom of the setup player data, which happens when the player first joins the game. So whenever the player first joins the game, we want to give them the tool that they had equipped when they left last time. And now we also want to apply the effects to them from the specific rank that they have equipped as well. We can rename this give tool function to something like give items that might not be the best name for it because it could definitely be confusing when i hear items i think physical items like tools but at the same time i can't think of a better name for the function so we'll just call it give items for now and if you think of a better name on your own you can definitely name it to that as well so we're going to go ahead and rename that function and we have a tool variable right here let's go ahead and also create a rank variable as well so equipped rank and pretty much what we want to do is we can copy all of that code right there and paste it directly into here and we'd be good to go but we'd of course have to add the get item function and the these variables as well. The thing is though, is that it's actually a really bad practice to write the exact same code in two different scripts. And the reason for that is because imagine that we change some part of this function right here, but we forgot that this function is also copied directly into this file as well. And we forget to make those changes right here as well. One example could even be the default health. Imagine we change the default health from 100 to 150 in this script, but we forget to change it over in here. That could definitely cause some issues. And it's really easy to forget all of the different scripts that you use these specific variables in. So what we can do is we can create a module script to put all the specific code into one script and then we can call that script from all the other scripts that we want to use those specific functions or variables inside of. It's very similar to how we made the utils folder and we created the rewards and stats modules in the last episode. So what we're going to do is inside of the utils folder we're going to create a new module script. You could name it something simple as utils. This is something that I usually do in all of my games. My utils module usually just has a bunch of random little utility functions which aren't worth categorizing or putting into their own specific module scripts because it's way easier to pack a bunch of smaller functions into one module script than have a bunch of module scripts with one function inside of each of them. Although instead of utils, you could call it something like shop helper. It really doesn't matter. Whatever you prefer works. But for right now, I'll name this to utils and maybe we'll rename it in the future. We'll rename the module variable to utils. So local utils and return utils. And now what we want to do is we want to copy this get item function and we'll paste that inside of utils. So rather than local, we're just going to say function utils dot get item and we can see that we have some issues in this so we're going to require the tool config the dna config and the rank config and we get that from all right here so i'm going to copy this and we'll delete some of these so we don't need the server storage we don't need the remote but we need the config folder and the replicated storage so there we go that fixes that issue now on top of that we also want to copy this equip rank function as well and we'll paste that into here so then remove the local and we'll rename this to utils dot equip rank and then we have an error right here so the way that we fix that is by saying utils dot get item because that's what it's named up here. And then we're missing the default health and the default walk speed. So we can copy that directly from here and we'll paste that right up here. So there we go. And now what we want to do is we want to delete this. We want to delete this function since we put that into our utils module script and we'll also remove the equip rank as well. And now we want to require the module script inside of our shop server script. So we want to get the server script service game, get service, server script service, and then we're going to say local utils equals require server script service dot utils dot utils and there we go and now we can say utils dot equip rank and then we'll fix that right here as well and then we also have an error if we scroll down a little bit further right here so there we go now that will all work perfectly fine and then we also need to do the same require inner player data as well so if we look up here we need to add in the server script service we don't need the remote but we need this utils right here we can add the utils right above here and then we're going to do the same thing so rather than adding this function here we're going to say utils dot equip rank and then we'll pass through the player and based on how we modify the equip rank function we don't actually need the rank variable so we can remove that as well and now it should be all good to go so we have our functions all in one specific script and we use these functions in multiple different scripts so anytime we need to make some adjustments we could just come to this one script right here make those adjustments and those changes will be applied to both the scripts that use this so let's go ahead start our game and test out our changes let's go ahead and equip the rank number two and move around and we can see that we're pretty fast now let's also restart our game once again so we can make sure that the rank stats are applied as soon as we join the game, which they
they are. We can see that the speed is retained. We still move very fast and we also have that equipped as well. So if we reset it back to the default one, we're slow. And if we join the game, we should still have the default one equipped. And yes, we are still slow. So that works perfectly. Additionally, just to confirm with you guys, the multiplier does work. So with the default rank, the multiplier is one. We only get one food each click. If we equip the second rank, we should have the multiplier of two. So now when we click, we have the multiplier of two and that works flawlessly. Awesome. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for this episode. We learned a lot of really useful lessons in this episode. So hopefully you guys did enjoy and hopefully you guys did learn something. If you guys did, as always, make sure you smash the like button, also the subscribe button and turn this post notification on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Of course, I do have a Patreon if you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I made during this episode. There's a link down below in the description and you guys go and check that out. With that being said, I hope that you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next episode.